So I want to talk a little bit about GitHub Copilot. I've chosen GitHub Copilot and Claude Code to be the two AI coding tools that I want to leverage daily and learn in and out. And that includes keeping up to date with all the latest features that they ship and understanding what I can leverage in my workflows, what doesn't make too much sense for me, but getting hands-on with pretty much everything that comes out with those tools. I think it's a good idea to try a bunch of different tools and see which ones you like the most, and then have a select few that you know in and out and that you use them daily. And that recommendation really comes from just seeing how fast these things are changing and how your workflow can change alongside them. I always tell people that if their opinion on AI coding tools is based off of an interaction they had of a couple of hours, even a couple of months ago, that they're really dating their opinion or basing their opinion off dated information, mainly because these things change so fast. I mean, Cloud Code didn't even exist like two months ago. So yeah, find something, use it. And no one's telling you to vibe code. No one is forcing you to generate absolutely everything using an AI tool. It's more so just using them so you understand how they work best for what you do, just like any other tool. Okay, so into Copilot things. I have found great success really getting a solid Copilot instructions markdown file. And the best advice I have here is that you're not going to get it ideal in the first go. Because as your project changes, as you accumulate more and more interactions with Copilot chat, you'll start to pick up on things that it gets confused on a lot specific to your project or hallucinates a lot with. And those are moments where you should pause and you might get frustrated and you might think like, ah, oh, Copilot, you're so stupid. And when you feel that, <laughs> take note of what it is there. And for me, that's usually the indicator that I need to be providing some kind of clarification in a Copilot instructions file. For me personally, I have this copilot-instructions.markdown file that applies to my Python files in this project. And I found that I was getting a lot of hallucinations, just issues around stuff related to Azure Functions. And when I added this section in here, things got way better. And again, this is going to be specific to your project, your requirements, and you know all of that. But yeah, those moments where you think like AI coding is dumb, that's usually a sign that we can improve the context somehow. Now, you don't want to make these too long or too short. Again, it's a balance there. But keep in mind that this file is sent along as context to any interaction that you have with Copilot chat that will require some sort of Python file. So you don't want to make it too long because, you know, token consumption, compute, and all that stuff, right? Now, another thing I want to talk about is the use of prompt files. These essentially have become like a way of defining AI workflows. And I like these a lot because you're mixing natural language with the code, right? In this case, if I want to have this basic security scan here, you can see that I have a list of tasks. And for example, the item number one says that ensure the Python virtual environment set in the settings.json file is activated. But then if we go to number three, we see we have a mix of an instruction in natural language and additionally, a command. And again, these are things that you'll find or you figure out as you work with these. Like if you were to just tell it, hey, perform a basic security scan, I think there's infinite ways that it could get confused. Whereas if you were to outline an attack plan like this here, put it in a prompt file, now we can go ahead and execute this, like perform a basic, and I just provide the name of the prompt file and I will go ahead and send this. When I am sort of putting together prompt files, I like to use my own API key. Though I know uh, Copilot, I think they're, the team is rolling out 
more uh, tr uh, tools around this. But I find that I can take a look at the tokens that are used and the costs uh, and stuff like that. I just like to be aware of. So I set my own AP Anthropic API key here. Okay, so here it's taking a look at it. help you perform a comprehensive Python security scan uh, as outlined in the prompt file. And it says here, let me start by checking if there are any existing security related warnings in the workspace. And now it's checking the rex.txt. And uh, let's check if the security tools are installed and install them if they're missing. So it looks like it did this uh, step here, but it didn't check the virtual environment for some reason. I'll have to uh, double check what's going on there. Maybe it already knows that uh, it's activated. Uh, I'll ask it after. <laughs> but then, yeah, we see that it's going to work through this task list, right? Now it is running into four. It has told us, great, all security tools are already installed. Awesome. Uh, now it's running through just the additional steps that I have outlined here. I do have to hit continue every time it's running something in the terminal. I know this is a bit of a, a challenging thing to figure out for the team because the terminal can be very dangerous, of course. Uh, and I'm curious to see if they'll maybe come up with like a way of allowing you to sort of whitelist certain commands and then really putting the responsibility in your hands uh, instead of having to hit like continue every single time. Uh, great. And at the bottom, I've asked for it to do like a, a report. And it looks like it is creating that report here. I've, I've asked it to outline total vulnerabilities, critical issues, and then recommendations. So it's outlining tools used to scan results, vulnerabilities by severity, detailed findings, and a bunch more of information here. So now my job is to go and look through these and see how I can improve these things. So I really like leveraging prompt files for that. Instead of me going back and forth, I just sort of shift the work to the beginning, shift more of the planning and the research and the outlining to the beginning. And then the execution takes less time. That's the way I like to think about these things here. And then you can also apply these things to even more work, especially now with like agentic AI tools, which is essentially what we have selected here. When I have uh, the mode set to agent is you really want to outline your things in a way that is clear. And it's like, do this, do that, right? So we could do something even more depth, like for example, create store location API with credit operations batch processing and geospatial search. This is uh, a, essentially implementing, or I guess AI coding via a spec. Spec are some things that devs use anyway. When you are planning work at the beginning, you need a spe specification or however it is that you call it. It's where you outline what work needs to be done, why, requirements, and all those things like that. So I have this, uh, this spec here in a prompt file and I have like the data model. Uh, we're using Cosmos DB here, so I have a model that's appropriate for that. I have a list of implementation tasks and then I have, well, it's pretty long here. This is probably gonna take a good amount of time and I'm very curious to see token-wise and cost-wise how much this would be. I'll uh, run it later and then I'll reply or add a comment into the video to see how this will do. But again, it's all about sort of moving the work in for certain projects and tasks to the beginning for certain tasks. At times, you're going to need to go in and just, you know, code like you always would. At times, you're going to need to ask questions. At times, you're going to need to run these prompt workflows. At times, you're going to be adjusting your instructions. Like there's just, it's just different ways of working versus replacing everything with one thing, right? Or with one new t thing or tool or anything like that. All right, and the final thing I want to show you all is the chat mode. So you have ways of defining chat modes and I really like these. These are ways of almost like creating your own little environments for Copilot. So I have this uh, MS Docs chat mode and the way that appears is I click down here in the uh, modes and I can click on the MS Docs 
one, and then I will hit plus to create a new uh, chat in that mode. And you can provide a description and tools that you want to leverage here. I actually have this connected to the MS Docs MCP server. And then you can also provide some custom instructions specific to that mode itself. So from here, what I can do is I will open up a Python file. So I'll open up like this DB file here. And I'll move this over here. I'm just going to close these. And then with this DB file, uh, because I have this sort of custom environment now with this chat mode, I can say, does this file follow uh, documentation documentation best practices? Boom. And we'll send this over. And oh, I could have set this to copilot models, but okay, it's still set to that. Now, because this has access to that uh, MCP server and to the Microsoft Docs search tool, uh, it's asking me like, hey, I want to run this tool. Can I go ahead and do that? And I'm hitting continue there. And it is telling us here. Oh, I've also, I'll show you in a little bit, uh, the markdown file for this chat mode. So I've asked it to provide the summary and its answers in a specific way. And it's telling us the strengths here, areas for improvement, and it's giving us a couple of things here. And okay, here's what I kind of cared about most here, which was the references. I'm gonna move this over here. If we open up the chat mode, you can see here that I'm always asking for uh, summary details, sources, related topics, and next steps. And it has provided, uh, I guess, recommendations as next steps. The references that it leveraged, Azure Functions Python Developer Guide, spot on. This is a Python Azure Functions. And this best practices for Python SDK and Azure Cosmos DB for NoSQL, which is also spot on. This is a Python Azure Functions project that is connecting to a Cosmos DB NoSQL API using the SDK. <laughs> so yeah, these are cool. And you can create more custom environments and things like that and have only specific tools select for it. I think that's important too because you don't want to have it give it access to too many tools because it's just con same thing with like context. Like it gets too much information, like choice overload or whatever the paradigm or, or um, what is that called? There's a word for it when you, uh, there's a paradox there. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, like try these things out. Uh, I think it, it, they become very, very useful as you're, as you're working and then just understand that your workflow can adapt doesn't have to change absolutely everything, right? Um, but yeah, hopefully you found something in here helpful.